Happy, it's Saturday, it's gorgeous out. I gotta tell you, it's a little hot. Uh, shocker, it's August in Chicago, it's gonna be hot. All right, so I am in the process right now of packing up to go out of town for a few days. I'm gonna be gone from tomorrow through the 26th, which means I'll be back here in the studio on the 27th. Now that does not mean you can't order. It means the studio space is closed to the public, but our website is open 24 seven all the time. We have shipping set up for people to order while I'm not here. I'm still reachable for questions via messenger and stuff, although I might not be quite as on top of answering because I'm taking a little peace and quiet brain break. So I will answer you, but it might not be within 10 seconds of you messaging me like I often do. All right, so we're going to move on to today's projects. First, I'm gonna cover with you the glass bead gel ornaments that we were doing, where the successes were, where the failures were. And then we have this cast resin cow skull to play with today. So we're gonna work on that too. Oh, thank you, Joy. Yeah, it's just, I'm getting away. It's gonna be quiet. I have a box full of craft stuff in the car. We're gonna see some family. We're all just gonna be staying kind of distance from each other. And we have lots of fun things planned, that's, but it's gonna be quiet. That's exactly what I need right now. All right, I'm gonna flip the camera down and we're gonna look at all of these ornaments. All right, let me pull this back so you can see all of them. Some of them were successes, some of them were abysmal failures, and I know exactly why each worked and each didn't. Now, as you know, I did these were the first ones I did. This one, and this one, and this one. And these were all successful. Now, I haven't done anything with this white edge. I might not, I might just save it and put ribbons in here and tie a little bit of holly, and that's all that you're gonna see on those. So those I call a success. Now, we're going to discuss, hang on a second, let me show you the other successful successes. So here's the bat that I was showing you, and actually, it kind of hangs like that, but I set it like this because it's a little creepier looking when it's standing upright. But if I want, I can go back in, drill two more holes, and just hang little things from this one if I want to. I haven't decided which way I'm going with that. This is the other one that we printed out and troweled the bead gel right over. I showed you this yesterday. These all came out so great. And again, these are just printouts from the computer or illustrations cut out of books, mounted with set coat clear to a piece of gesso board, and then the bead gel is troweled over. Now we're gonna show you the failures versus the successes that we hand painted. And I'm gonna tell you exactly why they failed because as soon as they dried, I knew what the problem was. Okay, why was this one that I painted a success and this one such a dismal failure? Very simple. And I left the can somewhere else. I'll show you, hang on a sec. This is the difference, our crystal clear Krylon. What I didn't do on this one that I did do, or I should say I didn't do on these two, because you see that one dried, dirty, blurry, messy too. So, but these two that you saw me paint dried perfectly and the bead gel didn't do anything bad. Why? Because once I finished hand painting these, I put a generous coating of this over it. And what that did was seal in the pigments, which didn't happen here. And remember I mentioned, you know, I, you even saw me kind of rinse it down. Well, when I re-wetted this acrylic binder that we had the paint pigment in with the bead gel, it caused the pigments to bleed up through it. And so, because we put water-based on top of water-based and it just made it a mess. Now, I'm not worried about this. I can turn it over and do this again on this side. This kind of stuff doesn't freak me out. All I'll end up doing is covering this, doing this side and it'll all be good to go. The other thing that I did, <laughs> I put too much 
dark glitter in my glitter. This would have been fine around the edge, but in the middle you can see I had too much dark glitter in there. It was just covering it. So when I did this one, I only put these two, I only put a hint of silver glitter in there, just a literally a pinch. And then I added, once I trialed this on, I happen to have this weird confetti glitter. I don't, I think I got it at Michael's like 10 years ago and I just tapped it around the edge. So that added to it. I really, really like how these came out. So at some point today, I will print out these again, mount them on the back here, and I will hand paint them in and I will show you exactly how I clear coat this. But literally, I took the can, I'm not gonna spray it in here because this stuff is stinky inside. And I took this and I went shh, and then let it dry. Because it's acrylic, it doesn't affect the way the bead gel bonds, but because it's solvent based, it didn't penetrate those pigments and let them bleed, and it made all the difference in my final project. So that's the clue. Like I said, I make the mistakes so you guys don't have to. It does not freak me out when I make mistakes like this because I don't consider them mistakes. I consider them an opportunity to learn what I did wrong. So I'm very happy with the fact that I did actually have this screw up because now I'm like, yeah, I was right. That could have been a problem. It was a problem. And I learned it on something small instead of doing something big where it would have been really, really a problem to correct it. These new ornaments on the back, I'll paint over this side and it'll all be good. So I'm very happy with how all of these are coming out. So I, out of seven, eight ornaments. I had two bloopers for ones that I knew were going to be bloopers. I absolutely love how these came out. So the, there's going to be more of these. When I do the Halloween ones, they're going to be more that are definitely sharper and clearer and nicer like this. So we'll be doing more of these and you all can participate with me and you can see how I fix those. Now our next, I can move that can out of the way, maybe shake some of the glitter off. I try to keep a clean piece of paper because obviously under here is always a mess and I don't change the plastic every day because that's wasteful. All right, so I bought on Amazon, you've seen me do this before last year, I did it with a bunch of other skulls. I bought what is supposed to be a 22 inch wide Longhorn cast resin skull. I've bought these before, this was very affordable. I think it was $20. So it's not so expensive that I'm going to feel horrible um, playing with it. Now these, if you look at these, they obviously they come in pieces. There's a square peg on the end of this that goes into the square hole there. And I don't know, you have to place it so the, the, the antlers in the right direction. So that's pretty much it unless I got it on the wrong way, which wouldn't be impossible for me. God knows I've done that plenty of times. Okay, so there it is assembled. It's about 21 inches from end to end. It has little stoppers on the back and a hanging hook. So those are easy to work with. Now, the nice thing about this being cast resin is it's going to take paints and stuff really, really well. Um, hang on just a sec. So this is my first go-to do thing. Every time I get something out of a box, uh, I clean it. I usually wipe it down with alcohol. Usually there's manufacturing dust. There might be some grease on there from somebody's hands. You never know. This is denatured alcohol, but rubbing alcohol works. And I just go in here and wipe it down. Oh, Sandy, thank you. You're so sweet. I just, I just look around and come up with stuff that I want to do that's either seasonally themed or something I need to be doing for something else. I'm trying to figure it out. So, you know, somebody sends me stuff. Sorry, I got to get the light down in there so maybe you can see it a little better. Now, all I'm going to do in this first live, so 
if you're if you're easily bored by watching me paint something black, then I think you're done with me for this live. But I'll keep talking, so. I'm just painting this with black set coat. Uh, set coat is my go-to paint for almost everything um, as a base coat or even as a plain solid color set coat has great self-leveling properties when it was created. Uh, it was actually created for finishers to do glazes and other wall finishes on because most, at the time that it was created, latex paint was the go-to for interiors and latex dried with a coarse surface on a microscopic level. Um, I don't want to give it a pen and I'll explain exactly. There's a pen. Okay, so you all know what a cross section of something is. If we're looking at it on the surface, we're seeing the flat piece of paper. If you look at it in a cross section, you're basically seeing the edge. And that's what I'm about to discuss is the cross section of a, of a layer of paint. So when you see it, it's laid down flat like that. But if you cu cut a sliver of it and looked at this edge, most interior house paints are coarse. I jam my camera up so you can see what I'm talking about. I might have to draw this a little lower. Okay, so most interior acrylic house paints dry a little coarse, especially if they're matte. So I need you to listen to this, especially if they're matte. The set coat, when it dries, dry smooth like this, like oil paint. It's the nature, it was created specifically to level out like oil paint, so that when you apply glaze over this surface, or plaster or anything else, it wants to grab in these little microscopic rough spots, and that's why you might have trouble spreading it around. Whereas on top of set coat, where it has this beautiful self-leveling surface, the glaze spreads and shifts across it beautifully. The plaster shift. You don't have it sucking the moisture out so fast that you can't trowel it, that it grabs up. It's great stuff to work with. I have been using and teaching with these products. Well, I've been teaching with them for about 10 years now, a little more, and I've been using the products for close to 20. So I can tell you firsthand, um, another great, paint product is uh, Perfetto's Bondego. I am not completely familiar with it. I know other people love it uh, and I know why. It's an excellent product. So definitely if you're not a faux effects person but you're looking for something similar to that, if you don't want to buy faux effects, you want to buy something else, um, Bondego is one I would recommend. And uh, Benjamin Moore's Aura Paint. 100% uh, acrylic, great, again, great self-leveling qualities, dries super hard. Those are my three recommended paints for most things. I used to have a few more, um, but as a lot of com smaller companies got bought out by some larger ones, I can't recommend them anymore because they aren't the same formulation, unfortunately, so their product is just not what I would be willing to stand behind as I have other products. So this is gonna just, we're gonna cover this, and this is a coarse surface, so you see I'm kind of like jabbing stuff in there. It's how I get into all the little cracks and crevices. And then I try to come back with my brush and smooth out any place that I might have been super sloppy on. Let's get into the, and you can see I've got, in, got to get into these deep crevices here. So later today, we're gonna to work on what I'm doing to this, <laughs> as opposed to just, you know, painting it black. And of course, if I don't answer your questions, you know, I go back and read them and write the answers out. And even if I have answered your questions, I still go back and write the answers out because sometimes it's just easier for people 
to be able to find the answer to the question if it's printed out in the comments. And you definitely, you know, when you do stuff like this, you've got to turn this at every angle, work your brush around in it. These are never tidy jobs. And I don't even bother put gloves on for some of these things because I just know no matter what I do, it's going to get messy. I think the biggest thing that happens for people, especially when they first start painting stuff, is that they're afraid of the paint. Like they've laid it down. They've got one spot absolutely perfect. And how do they go on to the next one? I don't strive for perfection that way. I think it, A, I think it's overrated. Hand-painted should have a certain amount of hand-painted look because otherwise it would have been machine-made. The other part is, if you're afraid of the paint, then it's always going to be something that ends up defeating you instead of creating something. Paint, it's just paint. Brush it on. If you don't like it, put on another coat. If you don't like that coat, change the color. Sand it off, strip it down. It's just paint. I promise you. The only time paint has been an issue of ending the world is when, I don't know, if, if the Sistine Chapel burnt down and we had to have somebody try to restore those. That's, that would be, that could be the end of the world there on that one, as far as painting goes. But really, I'm painting an acrylic or a resin cast cow skull. How big a mess could I make of it other than throwing it on myself? And don't laugh, I actually have taken stuff like this and accidentally flipped it up on myself. <laughs> and my white shirt would have like very bad prints on it. But at least I'm wearing my apron today, so you can be proud of me for that. So I get teased. I am truly probably one of the messier painters in that I never, my workspace is never perfectly tidy. I, I have stuff out everywhere all the time. It's a creative brain. Just too much stuff going on. Um, Jennifer likes to tease me when I, I was teasing her on a live, I think yesterday. And um, she spilled something I said, Oh, look, you're making messes like me over on Jennifer Ferguson's page. And she's like, no, honey, nobody makes a mess like you. And that's true. I went and spent, I don't know, three or four days painting in her studio years ago. And she was not feeling well. So I was in the studio by myself. And she walked in one day after I'd been creating. And I must have had every jar open and every surface covered. And, I'm not, I, I just don't know how she didn't just turn around, walk out, shake in her head, say, I can't, I can't handle this one and leave. But she has never forgotten that. I did clean up after myself, but I usually have to explode in a big way before uh, I can clean up that way. All right, so we've got our cow skull painted. Um, I can't do anything yet with it until it's dry. I did go over the ornaments. Um, again, sprinkle the love. Not you don't have. I sprinkle this one. Sprinkle it all you want, because we want to get you all in the habit of the sprinkles. Because why? We're going to do another contest after I come back from vacation. Who knows? Maybe it'll be inspired by my vacation. I haven't decided on the prize yet, so I haven't. That's why I haven't announced the contest. I'm thinking maybe it would be a little bit inspired by my my getaway. I already have some ideas floating around back here. All right, everybody, have a great one. Maddie, it's great to see you. I appreciate all of you coming and spending your Saturdays with me. Have a good one. I'll be back in a couple hours. I got some other work to do. And maybe I should wash the crud off my hands before I touch another thing because I'm wearing a white shirt and painting black. My mother would be so proud. Have a great one, everyone. I'll see you later. Bye.